Here's one of the pioneers of aviation, Curtis, in one of his earlier pusher-type biplanes. He sat front with nothing much under him. Imagine the thrill of taking off in that flying crate. But he made history every time he went up. Lincoln Beachy, the first stunt flyer, questioned the strength of the wires on this monoplane before he took off at the San Francisco Fair back in 1915. They persuaded him the wires were okay, but he was right. One of them broke and he fell to his death in the bay. Harriet Quimby was the first woman to get a flying license in the United States. And what a battle she had to prove that a woman skydiver could be trusted. Here she is taking off for her celebrated hop over the English Channel in 1912. Amelia Earhart was a schoolgirl, and Amy Johnson a baby in arms at the time of this daring feat, the first channel flight by a woman. Harriet took a big chance, all right, every time she went up. Airplanes were tricky in those days, especially the monoplanes. Three months later, the impre intrepid airwoman took her life when her plane plunged into Dorchester. It's a long jump from the rickety one-man machines of 1909 and 10 to the monster Dornier Whale, or DOX, the famous German airliner that flew to America in 1932. Here she is over Long Island Sound, starting her return trip back to Europe. She carries 70 passengers and a crew of 17. Her 12 motors, each of 650 horsepower, drive her through the air at 150 miles an hour. She takes 7,000 gallons of gasoline and weighs 57 tons loaded. She has to speed up to 70 miles an hour before she can leave the water. What an airplane! Her control room looks like the bridge of a big steamship, and it's almost as roomy. Well, she's on her way. It won't be long before we'll all be hopping to Europe in one of these. The World War did a lot to spur the science of aviation. Army, Navy, and Marine pilots are adept at group and close formation flying. It's dangerous business, but air fighters thrive on danger. There's nothing more inspiring than a formation of military planes passing high overhead. They're good at stunts, too. Here's the U.S. Navy's famous chain stunt. Each group of three planes is tied together with ropes. If one of them side slipped, it would be just too bad for the others in that group. The Air Corps says the next war is going to be fought in the sky. Well, maybe so. At least, these men don't suffer from trench feet. And here's hoping the supply of parachutes holds out. These three Marine Corps flyers are doing one of the toughest feats of the air looping in close formation. Boy, and how they do it. I don't know what this is. Must be a bunch of odd fellows out for a joyride. Watch this beautiful sight. Three Italian army smoke planes looping the loop together as a salute to King Victor Emmanuel and Premier Mussolini. Smoke pictures such as this are good for signaling in war, too. And now here's a British smoke flyer. He must think he's in a squirrel cage. While three of England's most noted flight lieutenants do a little fancy skylarking over Hendon. Looks more like a bunch of drunken skyrockets to me. The biggest thrill in flying, perhaps, is to make your first parachute jump. Let's go up and try it. One way to hop off is to stand on the wing, pull the ripcord, and zip, you're jerked into space. How's this for unloading? Three, four, five, six. They need a traffic cop up there. No left turns in this game. The only direction you can go is down. Look at them jump. I'll let you count them. Imagine stepping right out into nothing with the ground 2,500 feet away. Tell me that doesn't take nerve. My gosh, here are more of them bailing out. It's a record. 20 men jumping from one plane in 17 and one half seconds over Roosevelt Field, Long Island. Phew. Thank goodness every parachute opened okay. They look like jellyfish or something floating in clear water, don't they? and they make nice, easy landings, just like stepping out of a car. Well, I'd rather see a parachute jumper than be one. The most successful safety plane developed so far is the auto gyro with its queer overhead windmill. And here's Johnny Miller, noted sky devil making the first loop-the-loop -loop in one of these machines. They said it couldn't be done, but he did it. An auto gyro can land on a dime and give you a nickel change. Look, a 20-foot circle, and he makes it. Stunt flying has cost many lives but it's the most sensational part of aviation and gives the biggest thrill to spectators. The upside-down pilot in the middle plane is Colonel Lindbergh, taking the place in this group of a man just killed. Lindy's a wizard at the controls, although he rarely stunts. Here's Major Ernst Udet, one of the world's greatest trick aviators and Germany's most famous flyer. This daredevil with his upside-down stuff, inverted turns and steep banks, almost cutting the grass with his wingtips as a modern Pegasus. 
The machine seems actually to be a part of him, obeying his slightest whim. His control is superhuman, and down below there isn't a single heart in the crowd that's in the right place. They're all up in their throats. And up he goes again for another loop. Gee, he's making me dizzy. Speaking of stunts, how's this one? Johnny Runger, he must be the human leech, stands on the top wing of his biplane while the pilot twists, turns, loops, and spins. And just think, we used to catch our breath over circus riders. Wow, hang on, Johnny, hang on. Don't let them shake you. At a boy, ride them, cowboy. It looks simple, but if I have any choice in the matter, I'll do all of my hanging on a subway strap. Here's an observation balloon attacked by airplanes. Enemy aviators get the range with incendiary bullets, and the old gas bag gets its death blow. Let's hope the observer has a parachute. If he hasn't, many of the brave boys went up without them in the early days of the World War. It's just too bad. It only takes a few seconds for the balloon to go down in flames. Meanwhile, a squadron of enemy bombing planes comes over. While speedy pursuit planes clear away the balloons, the bombers prepare to lay their terrible eggs of TNT on the industrial center below. There they go. Oh! Anti-aircraft artillery searching for the bombers is soon neutralized by a thick smoke screen laid over the battle zone, and the destruction goes on. At sea, the warbirds are equally as destructive. A sudden dive from the clouds of a supply ship, a click of the release lever, and the bomb is on its way. Many odd and awful accidents have marked the progress of aviation. This started out to be a Sunday afternoon parachute jump to entertain the crowds at Atlantic City. The jump was okay, but something happened to the plane, and wham! Some backed up. Nat Brown, the Texas cowboy aviator, has to dump 50 gallons of gasoline to get his huge plane, the Lone Star, up in the air as he starts a 4,800-mile hop from Seattle to Tokyo. He still has 800 gallons as he speeds toward Puget Sound, but he needs 200 more to get him to the coast of Japan. So he is going to take on gas from a refueling plane right here over the sound. Whoop! Something's wrong. The hose fouled the big plane and look, she's going down on fire. They're jumping for their lives. The other plane dives to help them as the Lone Star practically explodes in the air, hitting the water in a mass of debris and burning gasoline. An amazing accident. One moment everything's okay and 10 seconds later, Brown and his helper are picked up out of the sound. The biggest thrill in modern aviation is the miraculous speed possible in the newest type racing ship. Here comes Major James H. Doolittle in a snub-nosed, bobtail GB racer. I mean, there he goes. He's making almost 300 miles an hour. Think of it. Five miles a minute. No wonder they call him the human bullet. He's America's ace speedster, and he's winning the Thompson Cup for the fastest land plane flying. Atta boy, Jimmy. Here's Lowell R. Bales, another Thompson Trophy winner getting ready to try for a new world's record in a similar racer. He's very careful about testing the controls. If a wire snaps or a wing buckles while he's going five mile a minute, he'll never know what happened. The transparent cowling protects the pilot from that terrific wind pressure and adds to the speed. The plane's nearly all engine and it's supercharged up to 800 horsepower. Here he comes, a beautiful takeoff and a quick one. Now he's beginning to climb up, up, up to 2,500 feet. Soon he'll make a power dive and flatten out just above the ground to get added speed for the dash over the measured course. What a thrill to feel yourself going faster than any man has ever gone before. Here he comes, back to the supreme test. Watch him. Oh! The most spectacular crash in the history of aviation. <laughs> 